Most computers these days use a hard disk drive to store information, but the HDD comes with a lot of disadvantages. It's noisy, slow, and much, much more. But fear not. Recently, there's been a new kid in town called the Solid State Drive, or the SSD. It's faster, quieter, lighter, and much more than your average HDD. Come to think of it, the Solid State Drive is just a fancy name for a flash storage option. This is similar to your regular USB, but instead it's faster and can be used as your computer's main storage drive. By the end of this video, you're going to learn the working principle of flash storage, like the previously mentioned solid state drive. Computers store data in binary form, that is using ones and zeros. The flash storage too is composed of the same. These ones and zeros are stored in the form of charges, and the presence or absence of charges at each tiny bit of storage would determine the information stored there. That is, it either says zero or one. So, shall we get into more of those details? The basic component in which data is stored in a flash storage is this, a transistor. To be more specific, a MOSFET, which looks something like this. MOSFET is short for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. To be even more specific, it's a Floating Gate MOSFET or an FG MOS. An FG MOS is very very small and a whole lot of these make up the flash drive. Now you're gonna learn how a MOSFET works. The N-type MOSFET consists of two N-type terminals, one P-type base terminal and a gate terminal. The depletion region between the N and the P type sections prevents current from flowing between the two N type regions even in the presence of small potential differences between the drain and the source terminal. The gate contact is made of a highly conducting material separated from the semiconductor by an insulator. By applying a suitable potential difference on the gate terminal, charge can be attracted from the source. As a result, the barriers that prevent the flow of electrons are lowered allowing electrons to flow from the source to the drain. Now, the transistor behaves as a switch turned on. When this voltage on the gate terminal is removed, the charge movement stops and hence turning the switch off. The MOSFET used in flash storage is the FG MOS as said earlier. The FG MOS stores binary bits in the form of charges inside the floating gate. The floating gate is a conductor which is insulated from all sides by a silicon dioxide layer. This insulation layer is impermeable only to low energy electrons, but can be penetrated by high energy electrons. When a pulse of high voltage of about 20 volts is applied for around 50 milliseconds at the gate terminal, a few electrons cross the barrier and end up in the floating gate. The presence of charges in the floating gate corresponds to the binary value of 0, while the absence of charges corresponds to the binary value of 1. Since the floating gate is completely insulated, the charge does not leak out even after decades, which is much longer than the data's life expectancy in any other storage medium like the HDD. The control gate, which is attached to the gate terminal, can take this charge away, thus erasing the charge and resetting the transistor to a binary value of 1 by inverting the voltage pulse that was applied earlier. Now, don't you want to see the circuit that's used to read all that data? Well, here goes. Don't blame me, you asked for it. Though the circuit seems to be very complicated, all it does is read the presence or absence of charge in the floating gate of each of the many FG MOS units in the flash drive. Well folks, we've surely learned a lot, haven't we? Thanks a lot for watching. Do like and subscribe.